So we've looked at how IT and communications can help us avoid travel with teleconferencing and with teleworking. We've looked at how it can make sustainable forms of travel like the DC bike share system even easier for the user. I'm here today at the Solar Decathlon in Washington DC and we're going to look at how IT and communications is employed inside houses to make them more energy efficient. There's dozens of houses here all using different forms of renewable energy to, for energy efficiency. We're going to look at the house of the University of Maryland and we're going to meet with somebody who's going to tell us a little bit about how they've employed IT and communications in this house to help make it more sustainable. I'm here with Keith Herald, who was one of the professors from the University of Maryland who oversaw the design and the build of the house. Keith, can you tell us a little bit about the design and, and how you approached it? Well, we, we concentrated on you know, conserving both water and energy. And so the, uh, from the start, this is a, a two-year project, so this is the end of that. You know, one of the things I'm most interested in is IT and communications. Can you start by telling me perhaps a little bit about how IT and software is an enabler for the house and the way it works? We have uh, several different uh, systems to collect solar energy. So one is a PV system on the roof, and uh, we, we convert uh, the sunlight into directly into electricity. But in addition to that, we have a solar thermal system that converts sunlight into, uh, into just heat, basically. And so that system requires a, a pumped water loop that uh, you know, uh, has valves and pumps in it, and those need to be controlled by the computer. So when the sun comes out and the temperatures go up, we turn on the computer and uh, avoid overheating the system, plus also send that heat to, to where we want to use it. Uh, so the, and there's several different uh, places where we use it, including storage uh, for, the, for the hot water system, but also uh, regeneration of our desiccant and then uh, space heating. So tell me about the internet connectivity between the house and the outside world. Inside the house there's something like 47 different sensors. Temperature, uh, you know, humidity, lots of different uh, parameters are being monitored. The students are monitor monitoring it here and I'm monitoring it uh, from, from a distance. And conceivably that information could be going out to the electricity company and to the grid, could it, to your power provider? Uh, yes, that, that could definitely be happening and if, if they were able to then make decisions based on that, I think it's a quite interesting uh, you know, model. Well, good luck and thank you for telling us a little bit about the house. All right, thank you very much. We're standing outside the house now and this set of boxes here is the interface between the house and the grid and this is where all the opportunities arise, this is really the nub of where all the opportunities arise for smart meter and smart grid and we'll talk about that a bit more on future videos.